Welcome back to the lab with Leo. Jacob Tran is back. He's a professional software consultant and game design instructor, and he's going to show us a little bit about using Flash in a new and interesting way. That's Jacob, right. as you've been saying all along, that Flash is a really great platform for game design. Mm -hmm. Not something maybe we normally consider for game design, except that more and more you're seeing it on the web. Right. Yeah, and everywhere, really. So, but I didn't think you could do 3D environments. I right. thought Flash was kind of a 2D thing. Right. So. We're going to take it up a notch today, All right. especially with the advent of CS3. Yeah. Uh, the Flash player is so much more optimized that you can actually generate uh, 3D and, and uh, play around with the environments. And Normally, it takes it. so much processing that it's not practical to do it exactly, in Flash. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to step us through some examples of how to do 3D in Flash. And the first okay. one I'm going to show you is the idea of parallax. And when I explain this to the students, I talk about when you're young and you're looking out of your uh, parent's car, mm -hmm. the grass beside the road is moving a lot faster than the mountains right. behind yeah. them. And, and the, the moon seems the to moon follow you. Is, yeah. yeah, it's just following. Kids notice that right away. Yeah. Exactly. So this idea of parallax is something you can simulate within Flash. So this is the most basic form of 3D you can do. Um, another basic form of 3D you can do is actually go into 3ds Max mm -hmm. or Maya, mm -hmm. generate a, uh, a image sequence. So let's say we have here um, a fly through of our satellite all the way out to space. And we're, we're looking at a two-dimensional representation, but because it was done in a 3, uh, 3D product like 3D Studio, it looks 3D. Exactly. Yeah. So you get this amazing result. And I actually did a project with uh, Nintendo, and I'm going to show you a quick example of how combining those two, you get a really, really neat effect. So here we're on the roof of a building. Oh, that's cool. And if we hover over this gentleman here, he turns into the Nintendo DS symbol. You click on <laughs> Whoa. that, you have to fly through, and you're back to a parallax, parallax world. So this element of, of flying through 3D space can be, uh, can be simulated in Flash. Do you do it in layers? How do you create the, the different layers in the parallax? So the way that, that breaks down is um, we do a calculation based on the size of each layer. Layer. So you can see that the uh, dandelions here are a lot, this layer is a lot larger than the layer with the mountains and the trees. And the layer with the clouds is actually, doesn't move at all because it's the same size as the stage. Right. So based on that ratio, that's how we determine how fast each layer should move. So it's actually done uh, numerically, programmatically. Numerically, programmatically. Right? You don't tell it ahead of time, you just say these are the numbers. Exactly. Wow. And um, a gentleman by the name of Damien Clark, he's based out of Australia where you have a lot of fans. Oh yeah. Um, he works for a company called DX Interactive and they specialize in 3D games within Flash. And so this example I'm going to show you here is um, a game called Blocks Wars, which uh, he developed. And it involves exactly what we're talking about. He generates 3D sequences within 3D Max. And brings wow. them into Flash, and those animations are controlled uh, using the keyboard. So he sent me some really cool uh, imagery that kind of steps us through his process. So, so this is 3D see, Studio Max right yeah, now. Yeah, this is him in 3D Studio Max rendering out the block, which is quite easy, and, and rendering it 12, doing 12 different, different animations for each rotation okay. that you can, you can produce. He then takes those sequences, brings them into Flash, and organizes it in such a way that when a key is specifically pressed, it goes to that animation and plays oh, it. Clever. His world is, uh, and he further sells the animation by creating shadows mm -hmm. uh, and such. And his world, the level, is developed by tessellating a series of, of uh, tiles. And so you can see here, this is him creating a level. And the result is 33, very addictive. Uh, <laughs> I want to play this game. Levels. And you're doing that all with the keystrokes. Yeah. Wow. So How do you get it in there? there? Come on, go back. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, oh, yes. Yeah. So 33, very <laughs> That looks like levels. fun. I want to play that it game. Is, it is so great. So it really isn't that much different from any Flash animation, except that the, uh, the little players, the sprites that they're using, are designed in a 3D program, exactly. right? And you add some features in Flash, like Shadow, to give it a, more of a 3D feeling. Right. So with CS3, so that's faking 3D. So that's faking 3D. That's faking 3D. Yeah. So with CS3, it's fast enough now that you can actually generate, uh, using mathematics, really? actual 3D space. So here we have an um, example of just a basic cube represented in, uh, bulb, in blobs uh, moving around in 3D space. And um, Is this done in ActionScript? How are you generating? Yes, you, really? It's done in ActionScript. It's using a library. Uh, That's pretty impressive. Yes, yeah, an open source library called Pan Paper Vision 3D. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see here, it's, oh it goodness. all involves cameras and uh, using something we call a Z depth. So you have the usual X, Y depth, but then you have an additional depth called Z. You'd have to for 3D. You exactly. Have, you have to have a third dimension. Right. Okay. So that's um, the DNA sequence. And what I want to show you is uh, on their website, if you go to Panavision3D.org, you can actually see a live demo 
uh, of uh, an underwater sequence that they created. And that's what we had at the I can't sequence believe here. you could do this in, in Flash. Yes. I just am amazed. So, so they would create the fish as multiple objects, right? Correct. Multiple objects described in 3D, uh, bring them into Flash, and move the camera angle as... And the tricky thing is the animation is so smooth, Flash is fast enough to uh, put the appropriate fish image in there in sequence. Uh, and of course it has to do it in real time too because exactly. you're moving around. It doesn't know what it's going to look like until you tell it where you're looking That's from. That's right. So you can, in this demo here, you can follow the fish or feel free to That's use impressive. the camera and just click around, bump the shark, get them out of your way so you can view the other fish. So for gaming, this would be great, but I think of making a 3D website, there's a lot of applications There's a for lot this. of applications. Are you starting to work with your students in 3D Flash now? We are, we are. We, we do a lot of image sequencing, like I showed you before, mm -hmm. bringing them into Flash, but we're starting to teach them CS3. It's, it's, a, new, it's a new thing, and ActionScript 3.0 is a, a step beyond um, what ActionScript 2.0 is, right. meaning that there was a lot more object-oriented concepts that have right. been integrated into the language. So it's a real programming language. Yeah, more. so it's a bit of a learning curve, but yeah. you know, we try to put it uh, into the curriculum. So That's they get so it. great. Uh, Jacob teaches at the Vancouver Film School, VFS, and you can also see his stuff at jacobtran.com. We'll put links all to all those things, including that. I want to play that block game some more. Great? That is so <laughs> cool. That'll be on our website, labwithleo.com. Thanks for stopping by, Jacob. Anytime. It's so neat. Hey, let's take a close-up look.